Ringo's predecessor in the Beatles. And we have here a picture, which I'll turn to camera one, of the Beatles when Peter Best, not Ringo Starr, was the drummer for the Beatles. And reading from left to right, there is John Lennon and George Harrison and Paul McCartney, isn't it? And our own Peter Best. You see him there, but he hasn't changed a bit. Okay? Now, Peter, how did the famous Beatle haircut get started? Well, that started when John and Paul went to uh, France for a holiday. Mm -hmm. And then met an old friend of theirs uh, from Hamburg, and uh, he had his hair in the so-called Beatle pattern. And they took a liking to it, so out came the scissors. And one night, they came back, and... Uh, we just had the haircut. It was more or less of a party accident then. Uh -huh. Really? Uh, how, how long were you with the Beatles? I was with them two and a half years. That was before they had the that was before they had the hairdo, yeah, right? That was it. Now now I'm going to say the word, and I'm sure it's on everyone's lips. Why did you leave the Beatles? <laughs> well, at that time I, you know, thought I'd like to start a group of my own. Yes. And I thought that uh, at that time also that they weren't going to go as big as what they are now. <laughs> <laughs> they figured this is an act of no future, and so I might as well pull out and start an act of his own. So. <laughs> Well, don't worry, no one's privy. I understand that there are many groups in England who pattern themselves after the Beatles. How many groups are there currently in England? Mm, about 1,500. 1,500. Boy, it must be a noisy country nowadays, huh? All right, Peter, now you have your own group. What do they call, and how do they differ from the Beatles? Well, they're called the All-Stars. The All-Stars? Uh -huh. And we play our music a little heavier beat and a little faster. I see. We sing a little, you know, close on. Music. Sure. Well, now, I know that you're happy having your own group, but, but do you ever have any regrets about having left this million-dollar outfit? Um, put it this way. It only hurts when I cry. It only hurts when I laugh. It only works when I laugh. <laughs> you make me want to hold your hand. <laughs> well, you're a good sport. You came all the way over here to tell us that story goes back to England tomorrow. Peter Best, thank you very much for coming all the way from England. Good luck with you all the I don't think it's necessary for me to make any introductory remarks about this next lady who is our special guest. There's only one of her in the whole world. Here is Miss Betty Davis. For me to say it. <laughs> I thought I think you're thinking you yelled so hard. No. I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> now, Tyler, we have an interesting problem for you tonight. It's one that I think you'll enjoy, and I know the audience is going to find it interesting, and I suspect that Miss Davis will find it kind of fascinating. Before the show went on the air tonight, we distributed paper and pencil to the members of our studio audience, asked them to write down any questions they would like to ask Betty Davis. Questions about her life, her career, the movie business, the people in it, no holes barred. We have not seen the questions in advance, have we? We have not. All right, they were collected by our ushers, so if I can have the questions now, please. Thank you very much. Oh, it'll be a long show. Panel, I think it's no secret that Betty Davis is one of the most outspoken, candid people in this business. Do you think that's a fair appraisal? Well, it is my reputation, so we put it that way. That it is. A little frightening, but that it is. <laughs> now, as you know, we have a well-informed panel. I'm sure they've read lots of interviews about you. So, panel, what's your to-do I will read these questions from the audience. You answer them as you think Betty Davis would answer them. Then we'll see how your answers match up with what her answer is. Bill Cullen, we'll start with you, and here we go. Thanks a lot. Pretend. <laughs> Thanks a lot. First question, do you watch yourself on the late night movies, and do you enjoy seeing yourself? And I answer this as I think Miss Davis would answer. Indeed. I think I would say yes, I occasionally see myself on the late night movies, and I don't enjoy seeing myself. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Except I might add, uh, some of them are so long ago that it's as if it was someone else, and I sort of like those better than I did when I made them, so there's a little compensation. All right. Bill, you're in tune. Now let's get to Betsy. The next question is, remember, you answer it as Betty Davis would, or as you imagine she would. Do you think there are some actors 
or actresses who did not deserve Oscars? Yes, absolutely. It happens more often than not. Miss Davis? <laughs> there you go. Oh, wow. Uh, well, this would depend my answer. Uh, I, uh, I, well, I'm beat around the bush now, Miss Davis. <laughs> Uh, if I were asked this by a member of the press, let us say, I would hope I would not give that answer. If Betsy and I were in uh, a room sort of chatting, um, I would probably say this, and in the position I'm in on this show, I cannot uh, say I do not agree with you. <laughs> that was a nice, nice sneaky way of saying you're right. No. And I might, I might add, I am one of those who received an Oscar, uh, and for the film I received it for, I did not deserve it, which was a film called Dangerous. And it was a constellation prize for a human bondage the year before. So I am one of those who <laughs> <laughs> I did <didn't deserve> <laughs> Good. Good. I, read, I read that in your book, as a matter of fact. No, all right. Now, Henry, answer this question, putting Betty Davis's mind into your mind. Are you temperamental? I think I am um, more moody than temperamental. I probably am sometimes called temperamental by stupid people <laughs> with whom I have very little patience. With whom I have a yes. With whom I have very little patience. You sure you're speaking for Miss Davis? <laughs> <laughs> well... Indeed, he's absolutely right. <laughs> if I are alone in a room with Miss Davis... <laughs> he's right. He's right. Uh, my reputation for uh, temperament, which, uh, by the way, is a very misunderstood word, technically. Temperament is a necessary uh, evil for the performer, as everybody on this panel, I'm sure, uh, knows. I, um, I am temperamental only, as far as my work is concerned, due to impatience with ignorance. Then I, 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 I've worked on it, though I haven't cured it. Thanks, Your Honor. Well, imagine you were Betty Davis. The paper said that you had a feud with Joan Craw Crawford when you made Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Is this true? Did you have a feud with Joan Crawford? Um, I think that uh, Miss Davis might say that because they were both excellent performers and temperamental people, that it could be that on the set, or at various moments, they may have uh, come into a bit of conflict, but... Are you listening? <laughs> We're fascinated, uh, yes. We're lighting up over here. We're getting nervous. Again, we have to go back to the little room. I don't know. But no. I don't think so. I don't we think that they had any We quality. didn't have no. any. Good. Not a word. In the first place, um, we didn't have time. We had about a 16-day schedule. Uh, uh, we're going to work together again, and we're going to have a longer schedule, and uh, I, I hope it's the same, but who knows. But no, no, we were too much pro uh, pro uh, professionals for this. Uh, and and uh, out of spite, we didn't have a feud, because everybody longed for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, also, it, it, it's very sad about our sex. I think any time two women work together, that women are always like cats with each other. I, I would much, uh, much more easily have a row with an actor than an actress. Much. Yes, I think that's a fairer fight. <laughs> you get more going for you, I'll tell you that. I'm not supposed to get in this game of answering as Betty Davis would answer, but I'm going to because the next card came from somebody in the audience, and I do not, as Betty Davis, I do not mean to offend, nor do I mean to offend as myself. The question is, how old are you? The answer is none of your business. <laughs> oh, no, no. I will be 56 years old April 5th of this year. <laughs> you know the time now. <laughs> well, you can't say I didn't give you a chance to get out from under no, on that. No, but you know, it's so silly to lie because it's so easy to look it up. You know, it's so silly. <laughs> And then, then you forget what you said your age was the last time. So then you get all ages. So I never lied about age. Henry, did you have something that you want to say then? I saw you put I just wanted to know if you're really 56. Um, 
I'm not. And how come you look like you do when I look like I do? <laughs> well, um, uh, I have a lot done on me before you see me here tonight. <laughs> oh, lots of work, an hour, a wonderful man, the name Mr. Gene Hibbs, spends a whole hour with me before you see me sitting here. Come by some morning for early morning coffee. It will be there. <laughs> In that regard, may I say that I've been with Harrison very early this evening, and she is stretching the truth considerably. Oh, thank you very much. Question, uh, Bill Cullen. Do you believe, now thinking of Betty Davis, do you believe that a career and marriage are compatible? Or which do you believe comes first, the career or the marriage? She, they are sometimes compatible and sometimes not, and as to which one comes first depends on the people. Speaking for Miss Davis, I think... I think I would have to say that they are not, they are not terribly compatible. But you wish you hadn't said it. Could no, I be that alone? would be a reasonable deduction. Could I be alone? <laughs> uh, but I think... Uh, Never mind, Bill. Let's go on to the next question. Right? No, no, he's, he's quite right. Um, my, 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 uh, I was a very dedicated person from right from the beginning. And that's very hard for the man, very hard, as was proven a few times. <laughs> you ask for honest answers, you're getting them. I'm going to ask you to sit right here with us because we have one small thing we have to do on behalf of our clients. We'll be back with you again right after this important message. Three. We have exactly 35 seconds left. I will not uh, put this in anybody else's mind except uh, spoken in the words of uh, Miss Davis herself. Question from the audience. What do you think of the Beatles? <laughs> Was it, uh, he oh, yes. oh, I want to know what Betsy would say, I would say. <laughs> we don't have time for that. We just got time for I you to say what you... I personally adore them. I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> just made yourself a lot of fans. <laughs> I do. I really do. <laughs> I wish this could go on all night. We have stacks of questions of one of the most fascinating women of, of the world. But we cannot uh, take any more time. Speaking for Betty Davis, for the panel, for all of us, good night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good night, Betsy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.